Hello, friends. Welcome back. Today, we're going to get JSON with the JavaScript XML HTTP request method. You can also request data from an external source. This is where APIs come into play. Remember, APIs, or application programming interfaces, are tools that computers use to communicate with one another. You'll learn how to update HTML with the data we get from the APIs using a technology called AJAX. Most web APIs transfer data in the form called JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. JSON syntax looks very similar to JavaScript Object Literal Notation. JSON has object properties and their current values sandwiched between curly brackets, uh, open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. These properties and their values are often referred to as key value pairs. Moreover, JSON transmitted by APIs are sent as bytes and your application receives it as a string. These can be converted into JavaScript objects, but they are not JavaScript objects by default. The JSON.parse method parses the string that constructs the JavaScript object and describes it and, and by the JavaScript object described by it. You can request the JSON from Free Code Camp's Cat Photo API. Here's the code you can put in your click event to do this. So here we have, first we set a variable of request, and this is going to be a new XML HTTP request. So then what we're going to do is start making adjustments to the request. So we're going to first open it, and we're going to make a get request to the API path of uh, JSON cats JSON and we're going to pass in true. And now we're going to root send our request, so it's request.send. And then so, and then we create a, I think this is a promise, a request.onload. So once the request loads, we're going to run the following function. We're going to say, set a constant of JSON is equal to json.parsed request. So here's the request, right? The request response text. So once that loads, we're going to save that as JSON. And then we're going to get, grab the document dot get element by class name. So we're grabbing the message messages array, and we're going to grab the initial one, the first one that we find, and we're going to set the inner HTML to the JSON that we received dot parse, and we're going to go with JSON dot stringify. So we're using the JavaScript um, library of JSON, and we're going to use the stringify tool, and we're going to use that to we're going to enter that the stringified JSON into our document.get element. And we're getting our JSON from here. We're parsing it here. Cool. So yeah, I think we're going to go over this again. That was just me describing it. Here's them. Here's a review of what each piece is doing. The JavaScript XML HTTP request object has a number of properties and methods that are used to transfer data. First, an instance of the X. A ML HTTP request object is created and saved in the rec req variable. So that's here. We're saving the new request as the rec variable. Next, the open method initializes the request. This example is requesting data from the IP API. Therefore, it is a get request. So here we're making a get request. The second argument for the open is the URL of the API you are requesting data from. Here it is, the URL from the API which you are requesting data from. So this is really short here. It's just freecodecamp.org slash JSON slash cats. But this will often be much longer string based on whatever API you're attempting to request data from. The third argument is a Boolean value where true makes it an asynchronous request. So that means that it's not a synchronous request. It's asynchronous. The send method requests, sends the request, and finally the onload event handler parses the returned data and applies it to json.stringify method. The onload parses the returned data and saves it to the JSON um, variable. Finally, the onload event handler parses the returned data and replies it to the JSON str stringify. So parses it to the JSON stringify. This string, string is then inserted in the message. And so it's inserted in the message. So we want to update the code to create a and send a git request to the free code camp uh, cat photo API and then click git message button. Then click the git message button. Your Ajax function will replace the the message will go here text 
with raw JSON output from the API. All right, so let's stretch this out so we can see it a little better. And so you'll notice our old text is gone. Now we have this new sort of space to work with. And so let's think about what to do first. So we've got the message.onClick. So onClick, we're getting it here. And so we can look at this. Um, what we'll do is we'll set it up the same way. I'm just gonna name things a little different because I don't like the way they name things here. So our API uh, request is how I'm gonna say it, right? And how do you write the API request? New XML HTTP request. Be careful to make sure you don't make TTP or whatever like that. You want to spell it exactly right. And we're going to execute that as a new instance variable. Okay, maybe not instance variable. And now we're going to do the request. So our say API request, and we're going to say open. And we're gonna make what kind of a request? We're gonna make a get request. And what's, are we gonna do the same API? From the cat API, so yeah. You really could just copy this, but I'm typing it out because I think it's useful. Um, yeah, so inside of our git request, we're going to pass in the JSON cats, and then we're going to make it an asynchronous one. And then we wrap this up with a semicolon because we're, now that we've created, we've op now we've opened the API request. And so our next one would be to send the request, API request dot send. So now we're sending it, and now we want to make a system for receiving it. So API request dot onload. So when it comes back, we're going to execute a function, right? <clears throat> okay, and that function doesn't take any parameters. And so we're going to say our, you see here they say JSON, but that's confusing. So I'm going to say, we're going to say our um, response data. And we'll set that equal to JSON, which is a JavaScript library. And we're going to parse the um, request.response. So the response text. The response text. That must be a specific uh, element. And then we want to add it to the document. So here, if we look, the message will go here. That is down here. So we want to get the class with the message, right? So we're going to say uh, document dot uh, get element by class class names, and within the class names we're going to get message. So we've got this guy message. Now let's see what happens if I were to. Mm, it's hard to describe right now, but um, our message by class name it needs to be name. And so message, we want to grab the first thing. And then we set the inner HTML to be equal to the response data, right? Okay, it, the, the response data, but we want to make it so it's json.string if I our response data. So now when I click on here, it should be pulling J JavaScript from the API of free code camp, and then upon receipt of that information, it should be injecting it into our message first thing. So let's see what happens. Rec is not defined. Cool, I used rec here, which was not right. I wanna use the API request here. Get element by class name is not a function. Document dot get elements by class name. There we go. We're on the test. Okay, now we're getting this. This is an API called, this is, looks like data. So we're getting this big kind of raw string of data, which is probably what they're looking for for this one. And I'm sure in future tests, we'll be making that look prettier. But for now, I think that works. Um, yeah, I think you actually could have just copied and pasted this into here and that would have been fine. But I like to kind of run through it this way because you know, we're not always going to be able to just copy and paste your answers. You want to know how these things work. Um, so if I were to make this more readable, I would put the chained um, on the same line here because that makes it so it's a little bit easier to understand and read. And yeah, I just try to use more explicit um, variable names like API request rather than rec because that can become confusing in my opinion. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.